Hi, I'm Patty Cake, and this is my best friend, Brent. We've been besties for a while now, and one of the things we bonded over was our shared love of Mad Libs. On Christmas a few years ago, Brent pitched the idea to me to create a show where we use AI art to accentuate the humor of Mad Libs. Three weeks later, we started filming, and we haven't stopped since. Through this project, we hope to share our weird humor and to highlight both the unexpected beauty and complete absurdity of AI-generated art. Welcome to Mid-Journey Mad Libs. Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, please come in and make yourself at home. My name is Patty Cake. Welcome to Patty Cake Games, and Merry Christmas, everyone. And we've got a great present for you, another episode of Mid-Journey Mad Libs. With me, as always, is my best friend and co-host, Brent. How are you doing today? And Merry Christmas to you, by the way. <laughs> Merry Christmas? I know Christmas. Um... I'm better than I was 30 minutes ago. Well, that's good to hear. All right. Well, you guys know how this works. We send each other, mad libs. We send each other answers to go into those Mad Libs. We then take those Mad Libs. We run them through mid-journey. We create art. We get together. We share that art with each other. And we laugh. And that's the show. And we hope you like it. And if you do, if you look down below the video, there is a button just for you. It's a thumbs up button. That means you like the video. Right next to that, there's also a subscribe button. You can click on that. That really helps out the channel a lot. And if you really want to be thorough, you can click the notification bell and that lets you know when new videos are posted to the channel. Brent, you are up first tonight. What you got for us? Well, I have the Christmas song. Oh. And it's a very special Christmas song because it's in the style of Sid and Marty Croft shows. Sid and Marty Croft are legendary creators and producers in the realm of children's television, renowned for their innovative and imaginative puppetry and live action productions during the 1960s and 1970s. Sidney Yolas, born July 30th, 1929, and Marty Yolas, born April 9th, 1937, began their career as puppeteers in their hometown of Montreal, Canada. In the 1960s, they ventured to Hollywood and found success with their puppet-driven live shows. However, they truly made their mark on television with a series of groundbreaking and surreal children's programs. One of their early successes was H.R. Puffin Stuff, which premiered in 1969. The show featured a magical talking dragon named Puffin Stuff and was set in the whimsical Living Island. This marked the beginning of the Croft Brothers' unique blend of colorful characters, elaborate sets, and fantastical storytelling. The Croft Brothers continued to produce a string of memorable and imaginative shows, including The Bugaloos, Lidsville, and Land of the Lost. These series featured vibrant costumes, puppetry, and often had a psychedelic, otherworldly feel that resonated with audiences of the era. Their approach to children's programming was revolutionary, departing from traditional formats. The Croft's creations were characterized by a mix of puppetry, live action, and vibrant sets that transported young viewers to fantastic realms. This imaginative and innovative style had a lasting impact on the entertainment industry and paved the way for future generations of children's programming. In addition to their television work, Sid and Marty Croft produced live shows, theme park attractions, and even ventured into more mature content with projects like the adult cult classic Electro Woman and Dinah Girl. The Croft Brothers' influence is still evident in popular culture today as their imaginative and whimsical approach to storytelling continues to resonate with audiences who fondly remember the colorful and quirky worlds they brought to life on screen. Marty Croft, who reiterated once that no matter how psychedelic their shows were, no drugs were ever involved sadly passed away just a few days before we filmed this episode. So please enjoy my Mad Lib in honor of, and in the style of, Sid and Marty Croft. Well, I can imagine how crazy this is going to be because Sid and Marty Croft shows were just kind of out there anyway. <laughs> so I'm I was, excited. I was all about me some Land of the Lost when I was growing up. Potato chips roasting on a purple fire. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> oh, God. Are they the California raisins? 
I don't know what they are. They, they, kinda, they, are. they kinda remind me of the California raisins, but like if they were the Grateful Dead. For the life of me, I could not get a purple fire, no matter what I did. Well, maybe once. But here we go. Chadley Witch Heart nipping at your leg hair. <laughs> God. Hello, Chadley. <laughs> <laughs> So wait, Chad or what, what was the Chadley what? Tina Turner, Chadley what? Chadley witch heart, witch heart. Okay. So I asked you for something cold, and you said a witch's heart. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So, but since it's supposed to be like someone's last like name Frost. or something, I yeah, kind of Jack Frost. That so, turned it into witch Frost. Chadley witch heart, nice. Well, it certainly gave you a winter witch that looks a lot like <laughs> Tina Turner. You're right, <laughs> from the '80s. Tina Turner and a little. Pamela Anderson and somebody <laughs> off of a Def Leppard video. Like someone from Def Leppard. <laughs> Yuletide power ballads being sung by conventioneers. <laughs> well, okay. Well, that's very Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> or Lost Saucer. Or yeah. I don't know, because there's like these three guys who look like they might be on a spaceship, and then there's like these other two who look like they're from Mad Men. So, (laughs) I love it. And they're kind of singing. They're like, it's a power ballad. Yeah, it's like they're they're like in between phrases, so it's like breathing in (gasps) before they're starting the next, you know. (laughs) And folks dressed up like congressmen. Wow. Okay. This is giving me vibes of... Do you remember uh, Phil Collins' uh, Land of Confusion? That video for Land of Confusion? Have you ever seen the video I for Land of Confusion? I might have seen it once. Okay, so basically it's a, it's all like puppets that are made to look like political figures and they're like caricatures of the political figures and that's what this looks like. <laughs> so it's kind of weird. So I'm pretty sure that this harkens back to a stage or a puppet show that they did. It, it has a weird name, and I know that Billy Graham told them not nobody to watch it because the women don't wear shirts. Oh dear, how how horrid! Everybody knows a roadrunner and some saguaro cactus help to make the season splendid. <laughs> uh, that's not what roadrunners actually look like in real life, but that's a nice. A uh, cross between a real life Roadrunner and the Roadrunner from Bugs Bunny. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> so I- I'm gonna tell you right now. Every single time I put this through Mid Journey, no matter what I did, as sort of a modification, I always got green and orange and gold. <laughs> Weird. Tiny tots. With their intestines all runny, we'll find it hard to plunge tonight. Okay, well, that's not nearly as bad as what I was expecting it to be. I just realized how well that sentence went together. Plunge. I was thinking diving. Oh, well, yeah. So, yeah, their intestines are all runny. (laughs) Or completely metallic and, and robotic, as it appears in the uh, in the image, <laughs> but that definitely looks uh. like something from Sid and Marty Croft. It's <laughs> very strange. They know that Santa's on his way. He's loaded lots of clickers and spoons in his Jeep Jeep Grand Cherokee. <laughs> it doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> no, it really doesn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's Florida Man Santa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vintage Jeep Grand Cherokee. I don't know what vehicle that really looks like, and I don't know if the Jeep Grand Cherokee ever looked like that, Mm-mm. because my friend Chris used to have one, and that thing was ginormous. So it's they didn't get bigger. They got smaller. Yeah, that looks more like a gremlin. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and every borderline alcoholic ant's child is going to spy to see if oxen really know how to fly <laughs> now is that the oxen or is that the uh, the borderline alcoholic ant because i can see that going either way 
I really don't know. <laughs> this one gave me <laughs> such, such great art. I could I could probably do an entire TikTok on the art from this one. Oh. <laughs> okay. And so I'm offering this waterlogged phrase oh, to kids from one to ninety-seven. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's so strange looking. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know. It looks like totally like a 70s show. Right. Or it's, even late. I and, mean, and very, this could have been from Banana Splits. or Right. And it's very, like you said, it's very Sid and Marty Croft. It's very Sid and Marty Croft. Like the whole aesthetic, it just screams one of their shows. Although it's been said many times, many ways. Merry Christmas to you <laughs> wow it's a Sid and Marty Croft Christmas <laughs> it's it's sort of a sleeve stack a little um, bit yeah and, and yeah. that looks a lot like Chevy Chase <laughs> <laughs> so the honorable mentions are fun too okay it's time let's take a look oh my god this is, yeah, of course, a potato chips roasting on a purple fire. There you go. We got purple it's fire, the, sort of. It's the closest <laughs> thing I got to a purple fire. I don't know what they are. <laughs> I don't think I know what to know. No. Those they are look creepy. like they're in Colorado. So <laughs> Those are very creepy. Chadley Witchheart nipping at your leg hair. <laughs> <laughs> they really went forward with that leg hair. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Chadley Witchheart. That's a crazy out. That hat. Oh my god. It's like it's made out of bubble wrap. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or his arm coverings are. Yeah. Mm. Ah, those convention ears. Mm. Singing okay. power ballads. It looks like a boy band <laughs> posing for <laughs> so, a Christmas album. <laughs> I don't know if it's a boy band or a, a set of quadruplets. <laughs> They look very angry, though. They're so angry. Why are they so angry? Well, They're supposed to be singing Christmas songs. <laughs> Well, you know, they're like men without hats or whatever. Oh, and an interesting thing about the piano. Three black keys, three black keys, three black keys, three black keys, and two black keys, two, two black, black keys. keys. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got these. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh. Their eyes are very <laughs> upsetting. <laughs> That's why they're here. <laughs> With their... <laughs> You're worried about their intestines? <laughs> I'm worried about their eyes. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Every alcohol, borderline alcoholic ants child. I'm not sure that's a child. Oh, I'm um, not sure it's a child. And what's with that plane with the giant face on the front? That's so. This is just creepy. This is like a weird avant-garde album cover. Uh, Merry Christmas ah. to you. Okay, that's actually kind of cute. Yeah, I thought I would leave y'all with that. Yes. A happy and, and, little Russian and, Christmas village. <laughs> yeah, and on a nice one. Uh, it's a Russian or Christmas Ma troll doll village because they look like troll or dolls. Or Monchi Cheese. Oh, that too. Oh, God, I forgot Monchi about Monchi Cheese. Cheese. Monchi, Monchi Cheese. Cheese. Oh, so soft and cuddly. Okay, well, you know more words <laughs> than I did. I just remember Monchi Cheese, Monchi Cheese. And I remember they had a Saturday morning cartoon. Well, I think Lady Shablagoo has her own Christmas story to tell. Well, let's hear what she has to say. And I also challenged her. And now, Country Fried Fairy Tales with Mother Shabla Goose. Merry Christmas. So there's this famous poem we all know, but my papa and later my mama made some changes along the way. I even had my own spin when reading this to my children. This is a portion of that poem that many mistakenly believe is called Twas the Night Before Christmas. Here's my family's Southern Fried rendition of A Visit from St. Nicholas, probably originally written by Clement Clark Moore. "'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the rambling farmhouse, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. 
I said farmhouse, right? Now, have you ever heard of a farmhouse without any creatures stirring? Barney Uncle Lara getting up to pee every 30 minutes, and let's not forget Gus, the ancient opossum in the attics, who woke up at dusk each night. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas would soon be there. Okay, y'all. Hanging fluffy, synthetic sock boots near an open flame, with care or not, is a fire hazard. Find a better place to hang them. The children were all nestled, snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. Those must be some British concoction because I've never heard or dreamt of a sugar plum. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, a cap, who has a cat to bed, had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. Okay, maybe that's why he needed a cap, but I'd just as soon keep my brain inside my head. When out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. I suppose I'd leap from bed too, if my lawn started to clatter. I'm a decent gardener, and I'm very sure that lawns should never clatter due to their soft nature. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. Actually, I just calmly moved the curtain aside. We never close our shutters unless a hurricane is coming our way. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. I don't remember this verse. I must have grabbed some unabridged version. Talking about moon and new snow on breasts is a bit scandalous, I'd say. When what to my wondering eye did appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. How miniature are we talking? And why are the reindeer tiny? Reindeer aren't that big to start with. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment he must be St. Nick. No, that was old Mr. Beasley, crashing his old red pickup in my herb garden and nearly running down my Christmas decorations. Looked like he'd already opened up one of the three jugs of moonshine my papa gave him every Christmas in exchange for letting us kids skate in his pond any time the ice got more than six inches thick, which was maybe ten days on a good winter. You know it don't stay real cold down south for more than a few days at a time, so it was a real treat, to be sure. Well, y'all, this version goes on and on, and we don't have time to finish. Anyway, I have some gifts for Tiger and Patty Cake. Merry Christmas, boys. Here's one for Patty Cake first. Oh, thanks. Oh, oh, this is cool. Thank you, Lady Shatlagoo. Oh, this is cool. So this is one of those, in case you can't. See, because there's a lot of glare from my ring light. This is one of those um, those wooden 3D puzzles, but it's a vintage camera. This will look really cool on, like, maybe on the top of the TV shelf right over there once I put it together. <laughs> I'm so glad you like it. My brother makes wooden puzzles like that in his shop. Okay, Tiger, here's one for you. Oh, wow, for me? Oh, cool. Ooh, that one looks cool. Oh my god, this is what I think it is. This is what I think it is. Holy shit. Is this the game for Patrick and Stephanie's? Is this the game for Patrick and Monikers? I heard you liked games, and Patty Cake said you really enjoyed this one. Well, Merry Christmas to y'all, and to everybody. A good night. Okay, so it's my turn. And um, so so you guys know, we don't really do a lot of pre-planning whenever we do this. We don't really communicate about what we're doing because half the fun is not knowing what Mad Lib, yes. what Mad Lib the other one is doing because it's a surprise for us. Um, and sometimes stuff like this happens, like, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we both ended up doing Mad Libs about wine in the same episode. And then this week when we decided to do the exact same song as our Mad Lib. But they're going to be different because I chose different words and because and I wrote this myself, so I chose different words to be replaced. And uh, think of it like when you get the same gift from two different people. Well, one's a different color and... Yeah, it's like two sweat. It's two exactly the same sweaters of different colors. So now you have two different ones that you can wear on two different days of the week and no one will say that you're a dirty person who doesn't do his laundry. I'm not yeah. speaking from experience. Okay, here we go with... <laughs> 
<laughs> my Mad Lib. The Christmas Song, again. And my art is in the style of Theodore Geisel. Theodore Geisel was born on March 2nd, 1904 in Springfield, Massachusetts to Henrietta and Theodore Robert Geisel. Geisel attended Dartmouth College and graduated in 1925. While in school, he joined the humor magazine The Dartmouth Jack-O-Lantern, but was suspended from extracurricular activities after being caught drinking gin with some friends in his room. In order to keep writing for the magazine without being caught, he adopted the pen name Seuss, which was his middle name and mother's maiden name. After Dartmouth, Geisel attended Oxford with the intention of getting a PhD. It was there that he met his future wife, Helen Palmer, who encouraged him to give up on becoming an English teacher and instead pursue drawing. She recalled that Ted's notebooks were always filled with these fabulous animals, so I set to work diverting him. Here was a man who could draw such pictures. He should be earning a living doing that. After leaving Oxford, Geisel returned to the States where he earned a living as a freelance writer and artist, submitting his work to various publications. He got his first break on July 16, 1927, when the Saturday Evening Post bought and published one of his cartoons. Later that year, he accepted a job as writer and illustrator for the humor magazine Judge. Six months after taking the job, he began signing his work with the moniker he is best known for, Dr. Seuss. In 1936, Geisel and his wife were returning from an ocean voyage in Europe when the rhythm of the ship's engines inspired the poem that would become his first children's book, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. Thus began his long career as a children's book author. After World War II, Geisel and his wife moved to the La Hala community of San Diego where he wrote most of his best known works. He received numerous awards over the years, but never the Newbery or Caldecott medals. One of his best known works, The Cat in the Hat, was the result of being tasked with writing a book using a list of 250 words that first grade students should be able to recognize. This gave birth to a series of books written for beginning readers, which still to this day outsell new publications of the same genre. Geisel died of cancer on September 24, 1991 in his home in San Diego at the age of 87. However, his legacy lives on through the Dr. Seuss National Memorial Sculpture Garden and the amazing world of Dr. Seuss Museum in Springfield, Massachusetts. He was posthumously inducted into the California Hall of Fame in 2008, and the Theodore Seuss Geisel Award was established in 2004 to celebrate accomplishments in children's literature. Geisel also has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and even had a crater on Mercury named after him in 2012. So let's celebrate this tremendous contributor to the world of art and literature with my Mad Lib and the style of Theodore Geisel, or as he's more widely known, Dr. Seuss. Cheese roasting on an open fire. Nancy Sinatra jiggling at your tummy. Oh, girl. <laughs> Why are her shoes made of bacon? <laughs> oh, she got bacon shoes. I don't think that might have been the cheese. I don't see cheese That's at all. Like... There's no cheese in there at all. There's just Nancy Sinatra with bacon shoes sitting in front of a fire with a weird gnome hat. <laughs> Is she sitting though? She looks more like she may be hovering. Yeah. She fell. She's falling over and it was captured. It was captured mid-fall. Awesome. <laughs> Toasty carols being sung by a choir and folks dressed up like Fruit Loops. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. <laughs> wow. Look at those hairdos. <laughs> this is those are some definite Dr. Seuss hairdos. <laughs> oh, you're not wrong. This is like a movie. <laughs> this is like how the Grinch stole fashion. <laughs> I, I, I love that her dress is all scales, like fish scales. That's really neat. Oh, wow. It, no, it's... It, those things definitely look like... Maybe Loraxes. Mm-hmm. Or, no, they're like knockoff Loraxes. It's the Morax. Everybody knows a tribble and some ribbons help to make the season banana yellow. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Dr. Seuss tribble. 
<laughs> what the? Oh my gosh! I didn't know turtles had feet. <laughs> little tiny mouths, little tiny eyes. Me, I'm a creeper. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm gonna make a bunch of babies. <laughs> you can't stop me. Kids of season, bitches. <laughs> tiny cute mammals with their toes all aglow will find it hard to grin tonight. <laughs> He's so tiny. That's a really tiny mammal. <laughs> I, I don't want to talk about this other mammal's fingers and their <laughs> odd configurations, but... Yeah. You should have seen Sam. me trying to zoom this one out to see the whole hand. Oh, that was some serious nightmare fuel. That's not going to be oh. included. But I can send it to you later if you want to see them. <laughs> they say that Taylor Swift, my distant cousin, is on his way. <laughs> his way? Oh, yeah. no. I didn't change that. I thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, and here wow. is like the big spiral of Taylor Swift's hair. That sticks up out of the ocean, apparently. And that's how you know she's coming. Oh, my. <laughs> you didn't have to add the cousin part. That was just a joke. I, I know, found but I thought the it was funny. Tree <laughs> Call me Taylor. No. <laughs> He's bringing lots of bubbles and baubles on his sleigh. Oh, I like that. <laughs> now, this looks like from Sid and Marty Croft. Yeah, totally. Like, I mean, at first I was like, did you steal my art? <laughs> totally I think not. I had one almost just like that. <laughs> totally didn't. What's funny is the landscape here, the landscape here reminds me of my mom's area, like where my mom lives. When it gets oh, really cold yeah. and it snows over there, this is kind of what it And then it like. just freezes. Mm -hmm. And every mother's funnel cake is going to spy. Oh, no. <laughs> But Is you that can what see. happens to them if you don't eat them? <laughs> but you can see where they were made. There's a little booth attached to somebody's house where they're making funnel cakes, apparently. <laughs> and everyone's oh, super excited to run and see the giant funnel cake monster. <laughs> <laughs> to see if baboons really know <laughs> how to crab walk. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's unexpected and weird. <laughs> Two-legged. Uh, Two-legged baboon. Crabboons. -like. Cra <laughs> Crabboons. Two-legged crabboons. Okay. I need to run that prompt. I need to run that prompt, the two-legged crabboon, to see what it gives me. You can stick that in the TikTok. <laughs> and so I'm offering this joyful phrase. For kids from one to seventy-seven. Well, that's straight up. I Dr. mean, that Seuss. is I mean, straight Seuss. up Doctor Seuss. Straight Doctor Seuss. You know, no, Even, no beating around the butch. It's just straight up Doctor Seuss. Love it. Yeah, like I mean, the the fact that they have one. Most of them have one leg. I mean, lots of toes. It's. Uh, I mean, that would just be something Dr. Seuss would create. The the one-legged yeah. creatures with the big round bellies that bounce around. Yeah, I mean, totally. Or maybe they're like tentacle toes and they go like, <laughs> across the floor. Although it's been said many times, many ways, wacky Christmas to you. Oh my! <laughs> what are those red things? What is no. that red thing? idea no idea <laughs> leave that alone because yeah the proximity to other yeah mm -hmm. nope. yeah no idea merry but wacky christmas the merry wacky christmas the, the, there's there's two of them and what's weird this is a zoom out so the original picture you can imagine was just the building with the two weird red things on either side of the picture so i zoomed out and then we got ghosts in the sky and a weird dinosaur <laughs> with tinsel and ornaments on it and all the presents and the little kid in the center that seems to be just enjoying all of it so it just it turned it from a really weird picture that made no sense to a wacky christmas scene with ghosts and dinosaurs it's it's like godzilla <laughs> at, at 30 rock or something <laughs> All right. Would you like to see some honorable mentions now? I think I would. All right. Half in. <laughs> uh -oh, oh, poor, poor Nancy. <laughs> Nancy Sinatra jiggling on, jiggling uh, at your tummy 
and falling into the cheese roasting on the fire, apparently. Roasting cheese? Why are her legs weird? What's going on? Why is she like, dressed like Spider-Man underneath her dress? <laughs> it's Madame Web. Um, that is such a mess. I'm like, oh. He's bringing lots of bubbles and bobbles in his sleigh. Oh. And a random and cat. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he's, maybe the cat's the flying cat. They don't have reindeer in this universe. Yeah. They've got a giant. Is it giant? giant? It's, it's a, pretty big. Yeah, it's it's pretty big. It's a pretty big cat that's pulling a sleigh, and they're apparently dragging a Christmas tree behind them. That's uprooted. Ah, and, <laughs> don't know why. And they don't need no Rudolph because they got a headlight, <laughs> right? They got a lamp. So this this next one is actually from the same prompt, and this is the year that Santa fell off his sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> why why did neither of us think about Rudolph? I, one thing that's interesting about this Santa though is it looks like he's wearing a camo Santa suit. Oh. <laughs> so it's it's uh, hunting Santa. Yes, hunting Santa. He's going to get him some reindeer. <laughs> oh, oh my. Uh, what this is, the hell? This is uh, uh, and so I'm offering this joyful phrase for kids from 1 to 77. So you said that he did like other art yeah. outside of his what we think of as Dr. Seuss. Yes, he did. Does this look anything like his other art? No. Or, but, or but is this there, like a kid's version of Dr. Seuss? No, but there are elements to this that are very Dr. Seussian. You, the stripes. The stripes, the weird hat that she has that kind of curls. You know, that's very, um, with, that's very, you know, without like, you know, um, like, I don't know what's going on with the, the girl on the floor though. Like, and why is, why are they under a ladder? Like that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> oh yes. Um. And this was, this was funny cause this is, uh, so I'm off and this is also, so I'm offering this joyful, joyful phrase for kids from one to 77 and they put kids and they removed all joy from this picture whatsoever. Those kids are the most unjoyful people I have ever seen. They are so unhappy. Well, they're <laughs> apparently child labor. <laughs> <laughs> and this I kept uh, just because I fell in love with it. This is like yeah, Nightmare. Yeah, this is Dr. This Seuss meets Night Nightmare Before yeah, Christmas. Yeah, this is Nightmare Before Christmas, Cat in the Hat. It's great. I just fell in love that, with it, so I that, kept it. Oh, that's that's a t-shirt. <laughs> that <laughs> is the end of my Mad Lib. Uh, I'm almost sad. <laughs> well, that is going to do it for our Christmas episode of Mid Journey Mad Libs. Thank you, Brent, for hosting this with me. And thank you, everyone, for coming by and watching the video. And if you are watching this on Christmas Day, we're really, really thankful that you decided to let us be part of your Christmas celebration. Yes, thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Brent. Merry Christmas. We're going to get out of here then. Make sure you click on like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on Thursday. Like and subscribe. The algorithm demands it. <laughs>